Hello and welcome back to Guillotine to 18th Century Chemist Theater. Today what we're going to do is go into a little bit more detail on the difference between mixtures and compounds. I find that this is one of the topics that um, students mess up the most and I think with a little bit of, of extra reinforcement then you shouldn't have any problem distinguishing between these two very important categories of matter. So, compounds versus mixtures. Chem fight. In the left corner, representing compounds, we have sugar. And in the right corner, representing mixtures, we have cookies. <laughs> and so, remember, the compounds are always going to be a single pure substance. They're composed of only one type of molecule, no matter how big or complex that molecule is. And that's one of the big mistakes I see with students, is they'll look at sugar, see that it contains three elements, and say, oh, that's, that's a mixture. It's not a mixture because they're not physically combined, they're chemically combined into one substance with, remember, specific chemical and physical properties. All right, mixtures are never composed of a single substance. So if you have a chocolate chip cookie, uh, that's obviously going to be more than one substance. Remember, think of the ingredient label analogy. Uh, if there's more than one ingredient on the label, then it's not a compound. It's a bunch of compounds or a bunch of compounds and elements. Remember that the properties of mixtures always reflect the property of the constituents or those things that make it up. And a great example of this is chocolate milk. Right? You take chocolate, um, it's got the properties of chocolate, texture, taste, color. You mix that with milk, with its properties, and you end up with something that's a blend of the two. Salt water is another great example of this. You have something that's salty, you mix it with something that's wet, and you get something that's salty and wet. Uh, the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup is a classic example of this. Uh, when you take uh, that, that peanut butter and, and cover it with chocolate, uh, you've got two great tastes that taste great together <laughs> that reflect the property, properties of the constituents. Compounds rarely, if ever, reflect the properties of the things that make it up. Once they undergo that chemical change, they can have vastly different chemical and physical properties. And so uh, salt is another great example of that. Sodium is an explosive soft metal uh, that will uh, react rapidly and vigorously with, with water. And chlorine is a, a poisonous toxic gas uh, that will kill you if you inhale it. it. used to kill people in World War I. But you combine that together and you get uh, table salt, which you will add liberally to much food. And then finally, compounds do have a definite mass ratio. Uh, based on their chemical formulas, you are always going to see them in the exact same mass ratio. So uh, sodium and chloride in chlorine and salt are going to have a specific ratio. Uh, iron and sulfur and pyrite, for instance, are going to have a specific ratio. But mixtures, again, due to the fact that it's uh, a mixture of different things and can have different proportions, will have variable mass ratios. My chocolate milk is going to certainly have a different ratio of chocolate to milk than yours. And even the chocolate and milk, by the way, are going to be different ratios. Uh, that's why we have different types of milk. And so I hope that helps. Those are three big ideas um, that students mess up a lot with mixtures and compounds. Uh, even on examinations, even all the way to the final, um, students struggle with, with putting that little bit of extra time and common sense into differentiating between mixtures and compounds. So remember, if it only has one uh, chemical formula, and it, all, it is going to be a compound with all the properties that reflect that. So I hope that little lesson helps. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.